As thousands of illegal immigrants continue to pour into the country from the southern border, the Biden administration trying to limit the flow of information that we get to see and read about it. It is a full-blown crisis that the White House won't call a crisis, and they don't want you to know the extent of it. They're refusing to allow anyone access to see the conditions the children are being kept in, which I said is part of the transparency that they boast about. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is the top law enforcement official for the state. He says he'll use all available legal means to rein in President Biden's dangerous border policies and force the federal government to adhere to the rule of law. Joining me now is Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Uh, General, thanks for joining me. There is a crisis on the border. I think by any objective stance, that's what we face there, isn't it? There's no doubt there's a crisis on the border, and it was predictable because Obama's policies were exactly what Joe Biden is doing right now. And there was a crisis with those policies four years ago, and there's a crisis now. So it was all predictable. Apparently, they wanted these results because they knew what they were going to get because we have a history with these policies of getting bad results, and, and we've, we've got them. Uh, back in 2014, the Obama administration built some fencing and, you know, people at later on called them cages and said Donald Trump had put it there. It was actually pictures from the 2014 Obama administration. So there was already a lot of misinformation about what was happening to unaccompanied children. What's happening to unaccompanied children right now under Joe Biden's administration? Well, the exact same policies as were under Obama and pretty similar to what was under Trump. They're, they're detaining them. They are releasing them sooner than they should. This is one of the things we've sued over is to stop them from not deporting people, uh, which they are required to do under the law. And we're hopeful that at some point in the near future, we'll get our chance in court to, to stop them from, from releasing people into the country. There are reports that in some instances, facilities that were designed to handle 250 children are now handling 1,800 children, which is a 730% uh, increase in the number that they're supposed to hold. That means kids are just being crammed into small areas, not COVID tested. How does the Biden administration justify that kind of, uh, of really inhumane treatment of these kids? You know what? I think that's part of why you see them not wanting information out about this, because it's pretty clear to anybody that can see this, if we can see it, that this is not good for those children, that this policy of encouraging all these people to cross the border at the same time, and his signaling on day one that if you come across the border, we're not going to deport you for the first 100 days, kind of made people hurry to the border all at once and created the crisis that we're dealing with now. It was all very predictable, and I don't think they want people to really know how bad it is. Uh, presidents don't get to just make up laws; as they go. I mean, that's why we have a legislative body called the Congress. And, and there is law in place about what happens when a person comes here illegally. The president has virtually suspended the enforcement of that law. Is that the basis upon which you're challenging the federal government's uh, policies at the border? That's exactly the basis uh, upon which we're challenging. The, the president, as you said, has no authority to just change the law. That's up to Congress. We have elected officials. They debate. They have hearings. They have a transparent process. With Joe Biden deciding unilaterally that we were no longer going to enforce that law, he doesn't have the authority to do that as president. We do have laws in this country, and even the president has to follow those laws. So we sued him, and we, have a, we got a temporary injunction after six days. We now have a permanent injunction in place to supposedly keep him enforcing the law, but I'm not convinced he's doing it. If he fails to continue to uh, uh, comply by the law, even after a court says he has to, what, what is the next step? What, what can you do? What can anybody do if a president just sort of thumbs his nose and says, you know, I'm not going to do it? You know, that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. You'd, you'd almost have to have impeachment proceedings um, because you can't, you can't force him. He's, if he doesn't follow court orders and he views himself as outside the law, he's, he's running amok outside of our Constitution, outside of constitutional authority, outside of federal law. You know, it would be, I think, a constitutional crisis. Well, we don't have crisis on the border, though, uh, General, because they've already told <laughs> no. us we didn't. I, I don't understand why the White House is so reluctant. I mean, the climate issue is a crisis. Um, you know, the issue of the economy is a crisis. COVID is a crisis. But we've got 
tens of thousands of people pouring over the border that we can't control. And somehow, according to the White House, that is not a crisis. Why can they not accept that it is? I mean, they've even sent FEMA to the border. FEMA is supposed to come involved when there is a disaster, a crisis, if you will. I think the reason they don't want to call this a crisis is because they created it and they don't want to be held responsible for the consequences of their actions. Clearly, uh, Donald Trump had had a significant impact on illegal immigration with the building of the wall, with the message that you can't come here and get in, the message that if you're seeking asylum, you're going to have to wait in Mexico. These policies work. They work like no other policies we've had, in, at least in my lifetime. And Biden reversed them and the consequences are his. And I don't think the, I don't think he wants to be held responsible for what he created. So they will not call it a crisis. General Texas has about a thousand miles of, of border with the uh, country of Mexico. So it's, it's clearly uh, front and center for every resident of Texas. And when people pour over the border and they get into the cities, maybe there's a perception that people in Texas uh, sort of look the other way and they don't care. My experience of being down on the border and talking, not just to border uh, patrol agents, but also to, to citizens, many of them who are themselves immigrants, but legal immigrants, they're not happy with illegal immigration. They know that it is detrimental to the, the economy of the entire state and to the country. Why didn't the president understand that? Does he ever talk to those people down there? Well, he has not made a trip to the border. And I think if he would go and talk to these border agents, talk to people that live along the border, I think he could see, one, that he's creating a tremendous risk with the spread of COVID, which he supposedly cares about. Two, just the risk with human trafficking, with drug trafficking, with other crimes. I would love for him to talk to some of these families that have lost loved ones to illegal immigration, where somebody's come across the border and killed one of their family members. That will change your perception of the border if you actually talk to people that have been negatively affected. So I wish he'd spend more time down there and get a real feel for what the people that are most impacted feel on, along the border. Well, I know that if you invite him, he will respond because uh, of his great respect for you and Governor Abbott and others in Texas. <laughs> I, I speak facetiously, of course. Uh, Ken Paxson, thank you so very much for joining us. By the way, you can follow the Attorney General of Texas on Twitter at Ken Paxton TX for Texas. And you can learn more about his work fighting for Texans at TexasAttorneyGeneral.gov.